But when we got back together to talk about what our groups had talked about, this one group kind of said that and said, and we think we ought to just establish an organization right here and now. And uh, that was probably one of the few times where I interjected some real wisdom, I think, into the movement, mm -hmm. which was, I think it's a great idea, let's do it, but let's don't do it right now. Let's think about the issues that we have to deal with and with an organization. Not, not to keep from doing it, but let's do it right somehow. I said, you know, we need a few months to communicate some about it. Um, and email wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, right there in those days. Uh, so it take us a while, but uh, let's have a meeting, you know, six months, seven months, some other meeting or something. We'll get together, those of us that can, and see if we can organize a meeting. Well, John Uhlenberg was there. Now, I don't know if he was on your list of people you're trying to talk to, but John would be an interesting person. John had a very active program at uh, uh, Michigan State in East Lansing. And uh, he said, well, if people can come to Lansing, he says, I can get the meeting space and, you know, I'll have some break refreshment and that, but you really kind of finance yourself for the travel, but I can kind of support our meeting activities there, Michigan State, and uh, we can have a meeting for a couple of days. And uh, so a number of us that were at that same meeting showed up. Mm -hmm. Some people obviously mm -hmm. couldn't, various commitments or didn't have the travel funds or whatever. Uh, for me, I think I drove up, I think a couple of us drove up. Uh, but uh, it was within driving distance, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to pay a big airfare or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. So we had our meeting there, and that's where somewhat AAC became a term that some people really started using because we had the augmented communication camp, we had the alternative communication camp, and I think John used to call it communication enhancement or something. Mm -hmm. We had these different terms. And uh, and I propose that we, we call it augmentative and alternative communication. I think Greg was in on the augmentative term back in uh, 76, yeah, in the mid-70s, he was using that term, I think, yeah. I think in the 76 book I edited, he wrote a chapter mm -hmm. that used that term and kind of spelled mm -hmm. out a few little reasons why that was a good term. Um, but we kind of, augmentative and alternative communication was kind of the compromise mm -hmm. position. The uh, colloquialism, a lot of the augmentative people was augcom, which is uh, very descriptive, I guess, not really. Uh, but, uh, you know, there were these different views, and I always liked AAC, and then you'd have to explain it, but uh, because people would say nobody's ever going to always say augmentative and alternative mm -hmm. communication. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, uh, so we created Isaac at that time, mm -hmm. the International Society for Augmentative and Alternative Communication. Uh, involving a number of people from Europe and the U.S. And I'm trying to think if there was anyone there from Australia. They were one of the early groups in, and I don't remember per se. What year was this? This was, uh, well, it was actually uh, the conference that our retreat was at was November of uh, uh, 82, mm -hmm. and it was May of 83 that we met at East Lansing. And uh, I remember that one well because, I'll brag a little, that was the year we got the very first federally funded doctoral and postdoctoral training grant for AAC. Uh, and I, because I got the phone call from the office mm -hmm. that I had to call. I forget whether they were called OSEP at that time or some other name, but the, the federal agency to, to quotes, negotiate the budget. Now, with federal grants, negotiate the budget means uh, 
good news, you're mm -hmm. going to get a grant. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to cut a little off, and what you're going to do is tell us where it'll hurt least, mm -hmm. and we have a new budget. <laughs> I can't tell you how much to cut. Have you told me what university you were at? Oh, I'm that sorry, time? that's right. Uh, gee whiz, don't report me back home. <laughs> I'm, from, I'm at Purdue. I went to Purdue in 1977. And that's another interesting bit of history you may want. 1977-78, mm -hmm. the academic year. Guess what happened? Like in many fields, many areas of science, there's some point in history at which different people come up with a similar idea. And our idea was, let's teach a course. And that year, we offered a course. Uh, University of Wisconsin offered a course. I think it was Dave Yoder was there and offered that course. It was Macklin, Frisco, and I that offered the course jointly at uh, Purdue. We were, eh, I'll use the word unique, not very unique like people misuse it, but unique in that we were the one place that had special ed and speech pathology mm -hmm. as part of this transdisciplinary field called AAC. Um, the other place was Frank Silverman up at Marquette University. Um, and so that was kind of the first courses. Yeah. Now about uh, oh, roughly three-fourths of the uh, uh, speech path programs mm -hmm. offer the, a course or the equivalent of a course from a survey we did a few years back. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, special ed hasn't quite developed that well. There are a lot of places where it is even required. Mm -hmm. I mean, we require at Purdue for spe uh, special ed severe disabilities, mm -hmm. not the mild, but mm -hmm. severe. And uh, some special ed programs do, but they haven't quite taken uh, that much interest right. in AAC, although it's increasing some. Anyway, uh, let's see, we got sidetracked on, uh, yeah, the Isaac was formed, mm -hmm. and we held what you could call the uh, third international conference on this topic, or the first Isaac conference, and I like to say this one, at MIT, because that's mm -hmm. impressive. Well, we were using their facilities. It was Howard Shane was mm -hmm. one of the people, and Penny Parnes from Toronto, I think were the program co-chairs or something that just developed the thing. And we had a nice meeting there, and from then on we had a meeting every two years, uh, even in the even year. We actually uh, had that one scheduled for, uh, I forget whether it was October, but we had it in um, uh, 84. Mm -hmm. And so that was the first Isaac meeting was 84, and then we mm -hmm. had it every four years, and to date your tape, uh, the uh, this year it'll be in Spain. Mm -hmm. 